comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. I got a fucking work over today from one of the listeners. So I get a message from a listener and she's like, I just bought tickets to your Melbourne International Comedy Festival show. Me and my husband are going to come. He's a huge fan, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's cool. And we're like messaging back and forth. And then she was like, what's your bank account details? We love your podcast so much. I'd like to give you some money. And I was like, nah, don't worry about it. It's all good. You bought tickets to the show. I'm cool with that. And handing out my bank account details for people to put money in. It kind of feels whorish. I kind of feel like a little bit of a whore doing it. Like, don't get me wrong. I like the money coming in. I enjoy that. There's just something about like, hey, what's your bank account details? I'll put some money into your account. There's just something about that whole (laughs) transaction that just seems a little like, I don't know, fucking pretty woman or some shit. I feel like Julia Roberts in fucking pretty woman. So I'm like resisting or fake resisting. I'm fake resisting. I'm like, no, don't worry about the bank account details. It's all good. I don't need your money. I just appreciate that you bought fucking tickets. That's the kind of guy I am. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, how much fucking money is she going to put in my account? So I keep fake resisting. I'm like, just join the Patreon if you really want to give me some money. She's like, no, fuck that. I just want to put some money directly into your account. And eventually I'm like, all right, I'll give you my fucking bank account details. So she transfers $40 (laughs) into my account. And I'm like, well, what do I have to do now? Do I have to blow someone? Like... Do you own me or I I don't know what happens next. So I'm like, thank you. I don't even know if I said thank you. But the next message I get from her is, hey, can you please message my husband? She sends her husband's number and she's like, message him. Just make it a long fucking message. Just swear, lots of swear words in it. And yeah, just go hard in it. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm like, I'm owned now. I have to do it. I can't just accept $40 and go, hey, I thought you would just give me the 40 for fucking free. So I'm like, well played. Well played. I'm now her bitch and there's not much I can do about it. I sold my soul for $40. I'm done. I'm no longer an autonomous human being. I got fucking bamboozled. So I'm in the middle of this. I'm fucking reading the message. I'm fucking dealing with a bunch of other shit as well. So I'm like, all right, I'll send this dude a message because he was in the army as well. He's an army dude and he's done nine years sober. So I'm like, that guy sounds like a fucking cool cunt. So I'm like, I'll just send off a quick message while I'm fucking doing all this other shit. I don't know what I'm going to send. I can't just fucking go, hey cunt, what's going on? It's Boyle here, you fucking dog cunt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what fucking send a message with lots of swearing and it means. What, I'm going to send a message just swearing at some dude in the fucking army? I don't think so. So I'm just like, hey... <laughs> <laughs> she caught me at a fucking a week time. I was vulnerable. I didn't know what was going on. Shit was going on all over the place. She got me at fucking my weakest. So I send a message. I'm like, hey, mate, uh, it's Boyle here. I should have said this is just as confusing to me as it is for you. But uh, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, you dog cunt. Something like that. But I'm like, hey, mate, your missus just bought you a couple of tickets to my show. Look forward to seeing you there. Now, can you tell your crazy fucking missus to stop fucking hassling me? And I thought that was ha 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 funny. So I get a message back from her. (laughs) Have you (laughs) sent my husband a message? And I'm like, oh, I sent a message. And then she's obviously found out what I sent to her husband. And I get a message back saying, dick. (laughs) Just dick with three exclamation marks. That's mean. That was really uncool. And then just end of communication. I'm like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) So... So I got fucked over on that. I did something I didn't even want to do and then I was fucking in trouble for it. But she's done a number on me because not only did she get a text message for her husband, she also got a fucking whole podcast on Fucked Up Friday about her. So well played. 
Well fucking played. Still pretty sweet I got that 40 though. Does anyone else want to buy me for $40? Anyway, let's move on to this week's Fucked Up Friday. If you would like to get your story read out on this podcast, just send it through on the website, boilcomedy.com. There's a section there for Fucked Up Fridays. Put your story in there, send it through. You know what to do. If you want to skip the line, help support the podcast, join the Patreon. It's a pint a month. I won't be raising my prices with inflation. The links to the Patreon are also on the website. So head to the website or just message me on my social media accounts, Boyle Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'll send you the link myself. Or you can just ask me for my bank details and transfer $40 into my account and I'll do literally anything you ask me. You own me $40 and I'll do anything. And I'll just give you all my personal details when you ask for them as well. Anyway, let's get on to this week's Fucked Up Friday. So this week's Fucked Up Friday was sent in by my man Nick. I think he's in the States. I'm not too sure and I can't be bothered scrolling up, but I think he's in the States. We'll find out in the story, hopefully. Anyway, let's get to it. In April 2020, during the beginning of the pandemic, I decided to quit drinking. In order to fill the insatiable urge to get fucked up, I resorted to ordering drugs off the internet. I knew my way around the dark net (laughs) net fairly well. Don't admit that in public, brother. I'd spent a good amount of time in college buying various drugs for everyday use. Once again, I felt like a kid in a candy store. I bought a little of everything, some Zans, MDMA, ketamine, painkillers, and then I decided to load up on a good amount of Adderall. The load of drugs was getting pretty expensive, so I was looking for a good deal on the Adderall. Everything I could find was around 30 USD for a 30 milligram pill. That's outrageously expensive compared to what you can find it for on the street. So I kept looking and I found a killer deal. 20, 30 milligram pills for $100. Perfect. I had them shipped to my house, which at the time I lived in the basement of a house with my landlord who lived upstairs. He was a nice guy. Sometimes he would get angry about little stuff. But other than that, he was all right. At the time, I was halfway through grad school. Still relied on my mum for financial help and was just happy I found a place with cheap rent for the area. I waited days for the package to arrive. During this time, I had already become a druggy maniac just from imagining how much better life was going to get in a short amount of time. The packages finally arrive and I dig into the drugs like a junkie going through withdrawal. The first thing I craved was Adderall. I take one pill and chew it up because I love the taste. Immediately, I knew it was not Adderall. It was not sweet and it tasted unlike anything I've ever tried. But it felt fucking great. I didn't care what it was. I was pretty sure it was meth. (laughs) I was pretty sure it was meth. Yeah, felt pretty good. Which uh, I had never done before. But it didn't matter. I was finally fucked up and having a good time. That night and the following day, I consumed 19 of those pills. You don't fuck around, do you? 19. I snorted a few and ate a bunch. Fuck, if it was meth, that would have burnt your nostril like fuck. I gave one pill to my other housemate because he was curious and didn't believe me that it was not Adderall. I was up for three days straight, acting like a tweaked out maniac. I didn't leave my room. I was working on projects, masturbating, counting the fibers in my carpet, (laughs) masturbating, feeling the walls for structure. (laughs) (laughs) feeling the walls for structure floors, masturbating. More or less, I was watching porn, tweaking out and masturbating for like three or four days straight, no sleep. Jesus Christ, that is a party for one. Nobody's invited. Nobody wants to be invited. Towards the end of the third or fourth night, things started to get weird. You have a high tolerance for weird because I can tell you right now, the first two and a half days sounded pretty weird to me. Locked in a basement by yourself, watching porn, tweaking out, masturbating. Things started weird. (laughs) 
All right, where are we? Things started to get weird. My landlord's room was right above mine and I could hear him talking about me at 3 a.m. in the morning. He was saying things to his girlfriend like, I'm fucking sick of this kid. This has to stop. I'm kicking him the fuck out tomorrow. I'm sick of his shit. I didn't sleep at all. He kept me up all night doing this weird shit. He relies on his mother for money. He's a piece of shit, freeloading, spoiled fucking idiot. I was shocked. I couldn't believe he could hear me. I used headphones for my laptop and tried to be as conscious as possible about the noise. I knew the noise traveled well in that house, so I was careful, but figured I still underestimated how loud I was being. To smooth things over, I decided to send him a text message apologizing at 3 a.m. In my methed out manic state, I sent an extremely long message apologizing Way too fucking long. I dug really deep and was trying to pull emotional strings. <laughs> I told him things you shouldn't tell your housemates you barely know. I told him I didn't realize how loud I was being when I was masturbating. <laughs> I was sorry for ruining his night with his girlfriend. I talked about how I was depressed and having a hard time with some recent deaths in my immediate family. I was sorry for being a piece of <laughs> And a bad tenant who relies financially on his mother. I went on and on and on hoping he would feel bad that I heard everything he said and take it back or whatever. About 12 hours later, my landlord responded and said he would talk to me after he got home later that day. I spent the day sort of recovering and preparing for our conversation. Around 2 or 3 the next day, my landlord arrived at the house. To my surprise... His car was loaded with camping gear when he got home. I wanted to speak to him immediately to get it over with. I just started apologizing and more or less reciting my text message. The look on his face was bewildered. He told me he did not know what I was talking about, but he seemed scared, <laughs> but he seemed scared of me. Turns out he had been on a three-day camping trip. I saw him the first day of my meth bender, but he wasn't home for the rest of the time like I thought he was. I was having auditory hallucinations that felt so fucking real that I didn't even believe him for a couple of days. Yeah, those auditory hallucinations, man, they will fuck you up. It's easy to dismiss fucking visual hallucinations. You can just say, that's not a real fucking triceratops. But it's harder to dismiss a voice in your head that knows all your weaknesses and vulnerabilities. So fucking, it was so fucking real, didn't believe him for a couple of days. I thought he faked the whole thing and put the camping gear in his car to throw me off the fact that he was talking shit about me. Even after this conversation with my landlord, the hallucinations continued until I finally slept like 20 hours. I was eventually able to work out that what I was hearing wasn't actually real. I was imagining the sound of his voice perfectly. It was so confusing. That created the most awkward relationship in my life. My landlord resented talking to me after this. I chose to explain what had happened. The drugs, may <laughs> masturbating. He was not. <laughs> he was not pleased. <laughs> no man, I was just jerking off for three days straight, and I thought you were talking about me upstairs. But it turns out you were camping the whole time. And no one actually heard me flogging myself so hard it caused blisters on my hands and my dick. I moved out about four months later and I still feel weird about that relationship to this day. I tell you what you should do, send him another message saying, listen, I'm not depressed anymore. I'm in a much better place. I'm still jerking off constantly. I'm still flogging it so fucking hard. I'll send you a couple of vids of it if you need to see. I'm fucking really ripping into it. But I'm sorry how awkward it was between us when I was living there and jerking off constantly. I hope we can heal these old wounds. <laughs> anyway, mate, that was a fucking funny story. Watch out for the meth and the masturbating. They go hand in hand. Anyway, that will do for tonight. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.